Hi Steve here from Steve's Internet Guide and in this video we're going to take a look at configuring the Mosquito MQTT broker uh, to use Secure Sockets Layer. Now I covered Secure Sockets Layer and Transport Layer Security in an earlier video and I'll put a link to that video in the description below so if you haven't seen it you can go and have a look at it. There's also an article on the site as well and I'll put a link to that. Now in this tutorial we l we're looking at creating our own certificates using OpenSSL and we'll use them to create a secure connection between an MQTT client and a Mosquito broker. The steps we're going to cover here create the encrypted connection between the broker and the client just like the one between a web browser client and, and a web server. And we only need to, a trusted server certificate on, on the client. We don't need to create client certificates and, and client keys. The way it will work is the Mosquito broker will have the service certificate and it will send that certificate to the MQTT client and the MQTT client will actually open that certificate, verify the, that it's, it's valid, use the public key from that certificate and connect using Secure Sockets Layer to the server just like a web browser does uh, when it connects to a web server. The client requirements are we need the certificate of the CA that has signed the service certificate on the Mosquito broker so the same certificate that's sitting on the Mosquito broker uh, that we need on the on the client and I'll show you that later we'll be copying it over. Now the broker requirement we need a CA certificate of the CA that has signed the service certificate on the Mosquito broker that's the one we're going to copy over to the client as well. We need a CA certified service certificate and we need a private key for decryption. Okay, let's look at creating and installing the certificates and the keys. Now to create the certificates we're going to use an open SSL. Now it's available for Windows and it's available for Linux and there are the links here. And these, these are the instru install instructions for, for Linux. These certificates will work on either system so you can produce a, a certificate or, and keys on Windows and you can use them on the Linux system and you can produce them on or create them on, on Linux and use them on, on Windows so you don't have to do it on both. And there's a little note there, you may need to go to the directory containing the OpenSSL binary to run it. On Windows it's probably here and you can see there. That's if you've used this uh, install here. Okay, overview of the steps we're going to cover. We're going to create a, a CA key pair, certificate authority key pair. We're going to be the certificate authority. We're going to create a CA certificate and we're going to use the certificate authority key from step one from here to sign it. Then we're going to create a broker key pair. This is a public and private key pair. Uh, we're not going to password protect it. When you're creating these keys, you'll often see an option to actually password protect them. And if you do that, then you might run into trouble when the server tries to read them. So uh, unless you're really sure what you're doing, especially when you're, you're testing it out, don't password protect them. We're going to create a broker certificate request using the, the key from uh, step three. We're going to create a CA certificate to sign the broker certificate request from step four. And now we should have a CA key file, a CA certificate file, a broker key file, and a broker certificate file. Then we're going to put all those files in a directory on the broker. And this one I'm going to use search, but you can use any directory you want. Then we're going to copy the CA certificate file to the client. And that's all we need to copy on to the client. Then we're going to edit the Mosquito configuration file to use the files. And we'll see the details later and then we're going to edit the client script to use uh, TLS and the CA certificates and we'll see that later as well. The screenshots I'm going to show you I actually did on Windows XP but the, the same applies to Linux so if you're using Linux the only difference really is that you'll probably have to use the sudo command um, to run the commands. Okay the first step is to create a key pair for, for the certificate authority and remember we, we're going to be the certificate authority and this is the command here to do it now there is a, a written tutorial on the site and I'll put a link uh, at the end of the video to that tutorial and you might find the written one uh, a lot easier to use when you're actually setting it up yourself than the, the actual video. It says here um, it's okay to actually password, password protect this, this um, particular key. Okay step two, now we create a certificate for the, C, for the CA using the, the key we just used and there's the command here. Now you can use any name you want for these these files. I've called it ca.crt. 
Um, keep it descriptive because you are using, or you will be using them later on. Uh, it can get very confusing if you haven't named them properly. If you go down and look at the text here, you, you actually have to enter um, some information into this. Now, most of it is pretty self-explanatory. The important thing at the bottom is the fully qualified domain name, the common name here. It says the common name is usually the FQDN of your domain name, of your server. Now, mine just says Workstation 4. I'm doing this on a Windows network. Now, I could have put an IP address in here, or I could have put ws4.stevesinternetguide.com, whatever the domain name was. Pay particular attention to this because you're going to be using it later on when you actually connect the client to the server. So this should be the FQDN what you're going to be using. Now step three, we create a server key pair that we use by the broker or by the by the server. Uh, the command for that is here. Okay, now we create a certificate request. And again, when you fill out the form, pay attention to the common name. It's usually the FQDN of the server. Uh, I'm just using WS4 in this example here, as it's only a test example, but normally you'd see ws4.stevesinternetguide.com or whatever domain name you're using. Uh, say you could you even use the IP address. And there's the command, and this is what you will see when you do it. There, there's the common name here. Now normally, uh, this is where you would start, because normally you, would be, you wouldn't be the your own CA in this example here we actually we configured the CA first because we are the CA but normally we'd actually start at this step here we'd actually send uh, a certificate request off to the the CA as I say in our example here we don't need to do that because we are the the CA now we use the CA key to verify and sign the service certificate and this creates a server CRT file so here is the command for that and I say the names of these can be anything you want them to be, but make sure you use a, a descriptive name because you do use these keys later. Okay, after we finish now, we can have a few files in our directory, and these are the ones here. And the ones we're going to be using is the CA CRT, the server CRT, and the server key. And we're not going to be using the other ones. Uh, we don't need to copy the CA key file, which is that one there. Uh, this file is only used when we create new server or client certificates. So because we are the certificate authority, we can actually use the CA key to create other server keys for other servers. We're only creating it for the one broker here. So these are the files. These three files here are the ones we're going to be using on our broker. These are the ones we need to configure. This one here is the one we'll need to copy to our client. So copy the file CA CRT, server CRT and the server key to a folder under the mosquito under the mosquito folder. On Linux you probably already have a CA certificates folder under mosquito, etc. mosquito, and also a search folder. Use the CA certificates folder for the CA certificates and the search folder for the server certificate and key. Now copy the CA certificate file, the CA.CRT to the client. This is what we need on the client. Now we're going to edit the Mosquito configuration file and I'm going to use a, another listener and here are the entries here, the CA file, the key file, the cert file. Um, TLS version I've set here but you don't have to, that, that is the default I believe and you can see them here. Now a quick note here is there's nothing else in this configuration file. Uh, a lot of questions I get uh, or have got um, people have been trying to configure uh, certificates and SSL on a, a broker and at the same time they're, they're using um, username and password authentication and probably other things as well. Now I recommend you do one thing at once. So if you're just testing this out uh, then you forget about authentication, forget about usernames and passwords, only configure SSL. Now once you get SSL to work on the broker then you do usernames and passwords and once you've got that to work then you can combine the twos in two into one configuration file but try to stick to doing one thing at once now step nine uh, edit the client to tell it to use TLS and give it the path to the the file the Python clients that I'd be using in the example you need you to you need to use the TLS set command to do it and this is an example of it so the Python client is running on Windows now 
testing if all goes well you should be able to publish and subscribe to topics as normal but now the connection is actually going to be encrypted unfortunately you can't see whether it's encrypted or not 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 easily anyway uh, the only real way of seeing it is when it fails so if if it fails you'll know but otherwise you won't know it's it's actually been encrypted now this is the command for the mosquito pub client and it's probably easy to use to test it out initially and we're using the dash dash ca file the dash dash ca path one uh, people reported problems using that that it hasn't worked okay now this is what happens when it fails and you can see it here a tls error has occurred now i've used a, an incorrect ca name i've used the ip address you can see it here and the certificate actually had the computer name on there which in this case is steve laptop and once I put the computer name instead of the IP address, it actually works okay. Now there is a switch in the Mosquito Publish client and there is a switch in the Python client where you can tell it to ignore the name. So if you use that switch, it's the minus insecure switch. If you use that switch, then even though you've used the IP address instead of the computer name, it will actually work. If some problems that reported uh, that came on, on the um, comments wrong version of OpenCL OpenSSL rather uh, on CentOS uh, 7 and updating OpenSSL fixed it I'm not familiar with CentOS 7 problems when using the CA path on Mosquito Publish tool uh, use the CA file command instead problems with the server name on certificate you can use TLS insecure set on the Python client or the minus minus insecure switch on the mosquito publish tool now here's a link to the tutorial on the site and i say probably is easier when you're configuring it to actually use the written tutorial rather than the video um, for the steps and you'll also find some links to other related articles on the on the tutorial so that brings us to the end of the video uh, if you've got a comment then use the comment form below if you liked it then use the like button below and if you want to get notified when I publish new videos, then you can subscribe to the channel. If you go over to the website, there's also a, a newsletter subscription form if you want to subscribe to the newsletter. Okay, until next time, bye.